So I say, uh, you know, in the, in the world of B'nai Torah, I think that they would probably respond to either one or two. How do you achieve synthesis? Synthesis is that when Chana uh, Wasman sits down, I mean, when Yitzhak O'Chanan sits down and breaks his head to, to try to see if there is a halachic basis to be mat to the saguna, that's called responding to ethics. Oftentimes, when you're talking about modern uh, interpretation, it's bent beyond recognition. That's what I'm saying. You have to know what's tamay. And you have to be a Nechanan Wasserman. You have to be a credible person. And this is a big, big issue because people who have no credibility, today you go on the internet and you're a Goyen. Everybody's a Goyen because they have to just press a button and they, and they already have a PhD. It's endless. So therefore... You know, it has to be a person of credibility. And, um, but in general, any posek, any posek who's indifferent to suffering, right, you have to ask if that's the proper, proper person, right? There's something wrong. In fact, we say that the Sanhedrin is, is not allowed to render, is not, there's, there's a halacha called par helam davar. Masechah's Horus, which was recently the Daf Yomi, um, is like this. When the Bezdin HaGadol, the big Bezdin, Sanhedrin, rules on something, and it was a mistake. And then people went out and did a Veros. Example, example given is that they said, oh, carry, you know, theoretically, that, um, yeah, that um, we should wear five partios in Tefillin, not four. Or they said, you can carry on Shabbos. Okay? And somebody went out and did that. Uh, they went out and carried on Shabbos. And so that person is not responsible to bring a carbon. The Bezdin has to bring a carbon for misguiding people. Mm-hmm. However, the Bezdin cannot be constituted unless it's the legitimate, ru- in other words, again, legitimate, credible. And part of that is a certain sensitivity that comes with who you are in life. So, for example, a ger, a mamzer, a nasin, people who don't come from, the, from that type of family, who come from a family that didn't experience the full totality of Jewish life in its way, are not able to be kept. If they're there, then, then the whole thing is off because it's not considered. And one of those is zaken shelo ra'o lo banim, someone who never raised children, cannot sit in a court and judge life or death matters or be held responsible for authoritative psak. Because guess what? They don't have that range of experience and understanding of what it means to, t- to be responsible to issue a death penalty on somebody and what's involved in that. It's a very, very interesting thing. It's a psal. Okay. All right, let's move on. Um, I want to read you the Medrash. What are the ten? Let's go through the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments of Kedoshim. You ready? Here we go. Now, um, this is... Uh, the, the, the Medrash asks... That, that the Parsha says you should speak to Kol Adas Yisrael, speak to the entire Jewish people. It is why? Because Rov Gufei Torah Tuluyim Bo. Meaning, this is such an important thing. Tani Rabbi Chia, Parsha Zu Nemra Bahakel, Mivnesha Rov Gufei Torah Tuluyim Bo. The essence of Torah is in this week's Parsha. Rev Levi Amar, in addition to that, Mivnesha Aseros Hadibros Kulim Besoho. Where did you have Aseros Hadibros in this week's Parsha? Well, listen carefully. Anochi Hashem Alokecha is what it says in Shmos. In Parshas Yisrael, and it says over here, Ani Adonai Eloheichem. Ah, so what does that mean, Ani Adonai Eloheichem? It means it's the equivalent of belief in Hashem, the essential belief in Hashem. Okay? Lo yelacha lehim acherim, second dibur, uksiv hacha, Elohei masecha lo sasu lachem. Don't make gods of various masks, right? So you can't have other, other, idol, other idols. Lo sisa, shem elokech alashav. You can't swear in Hashem's name in vain. And it says over here, lo, sish, lo sishavu bishmi. Don't take off. So now, okay, so if it is like this, that every dibor is resonating in an echo here in Parshish Kedoshim, the question is why. For example, zachor es yom ha-shabbos l'kadcho. And it says over here, es shab sosai tishmaro. Okay? Kabed es avicha v'esimecha. And then we have ish imo the Aviv Tirau. Okay? Now, what do you learn from that one? 
Who's mentioned first? The father. Ish imo of Aviv Tira, who's mentioned first? The mother. What is that coming to teach you? It's coming to teach you what? Who remembers? We have a natural fear of the father. That's correct. We have a natural fear of the father. You don't have to tell me that Ish Aviv Tira. Of course, you're going to be afraid of your father. It's coming to teach you something different. Be afraid of your mother. In other words, treat your mother with that respect. Aha! This tips our hand. We now understand that Parsha's Kedoshim adds a deeper dimension of the mitzvah. Right? You would never have thought, it, which runs counter to nature. Our nature is, you're afraid of the father, and the mother is the one who gives you, you know, uh, you know hot, co- hot cocoa when you, you know, when you messed up in school. So, but, you know, you messed up with your father's anger at you, you run to your mother for support. Right? But it's not exactly true. Because we really are supposed to approach our mother with the same reverence as we do our father. So comes Parshas Kedoshim and adds a layer of, of, how would say, challenge to do this mitzvah in a, more, in a deeper and more profound way. Is there more cover for the father? What's that? Is there not more cover for the father? They say not because a kid understands that his mother is the one who really butters his bread, as it were. And I, I mean, I mean, I mean a, in a monetary sense, but in terms of She's the one that really cares from day to day. The father could be out doing who knows what, right? He's working all day. He's busy all day. I don't know. But the mother s- steps up and helps him day to day, minute by minute. So there's why they give cover. Okay, so yeah, you've got to give cover to the father over the mother. That's true. But um, that's also a limud. That's why it says, because it's just the opposite. I would have thought, let me respect my mother first, because my father has to respect my mother, but the truth is my mother also has to offer, has to, has to recognize his place. Yes, it's true that my, my parents need to respect each other, but ultimately I would have naturally been inclined to honor my mother first. So what does the Torah come to tell you? No, go counter, it's counterintuitive. Counterintuitive, all right? So, again, if you want to say that that fits into the category of this is what is truly ethical, you're going to tell me that no, I should honor my mother more because she deserves it. And I should only fear my father. No, Torah comes to tell you, no, 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 that's not proper. The, the mitzvahs will push you in a counterintuitive direction and say, no, no, no. The, the real truth is here. That's where the real deeper truth is. Okay? Um, so we have, we have those, uh, those ten mitzvahs. Now, Let's go on to one mitzvah, and this will sort of focus the rest of our discussion on, one mitzvah that's equal to all Ten Commandments. Which, which mitzvah in Parshas Kedoshim is the equivalent of all Ten Commandments wrapped into one? Take a, it's a, it's a losa say. It's something you're not supposed to do. Lo selech rochel vamecha. Do not speak Russian horror. So the Balaturim points out that the word Rachil is spelled with a Yud. Rachil could be just Reish Chaf Lamed. It could have been. But it's with a Yud. Yud to point out that this is the epicenter of the, of the entire Parshas Kedoshim, okay, which is your second level of Aseris Adibros. The Parsha which has Ani Hashem Elokeichem ten times. The Parsha that says Ani Hashem ten times, which is the, how it's just, I'm going to call them the, the, the counterintuitive, ethical, emotional additions to the simple pshat that was given in the Aserah Sadibros, many, many layers and dimensions of profound um, understanding and observance and, and kedusha are added here. Okay? But what's at the epicenter of that storm? Lo selech racho v'amecha. No lashon hara. Now, let's understand something, however. By adding the Yud, you identified it as the key principle. Why do you think, I'll ask you this question, why do you think that Lashon Hara is the key principle of the whole, is the whole key, it's the key, the foundation of the entire Parshas Kedoshim? Why? Why would that be the whole Parshas Kedoshim? Why do you think? Who's, a, who's associated with Lashon Hara? The Nachash. The Nachash. What was the Nachash's job? 
to break the kedusha of the of the zivig of Adam and Chava, right? He disturbed their their sacred bond. Lashon Hara, in its own sense, will destroy, as we mentioned last week, the seven types of negayim, right? They uh, re- re- correspond to seven mitzvahs, including murder. Why? Because you can murder with words, or you can steal with words, right? And it doesn't mean that you're actually murdering somebody, but it has the, the equivalent of. In fact, the Nachash didn't murder anybody, but he caused mortality to enter the world. So didn't he murder? How did he murder? He murdered with his words. Okay. So, therefore, Lashon Hara is our arch enemy in terms of disturbing the Kedusha. What he basically says is that the Kodesh is not Kodesh, it's Chol, and the Chol is Kodesh, and will, will, will with his Dibur, destroy a person that you would, would give Kavo to, that would you have Yira for, and, and therefore undermine the entire, the entire message, the entire um, agenda of Parsha's Kedoshim. However, there's three words, there's a couple words that come right after Lo Sedech Ruach Mecha. It says, Lo Sa'amod Al Dam Re'echa. Now, one second. So the Baltern points out here, just like Lo Sedech Ruachel, we added a Yod. In this phrase, we're minus above. Why? It should have said, don't stand by when your friend is being injured. Why did it leave out the vav? So the Mephorshim here explained, and that's really what the Baal term is after. He says it's one mitzvah, meaning, think of it as tipping scales of justice. Because the re- words right before this pasuk are, betzedek tishpot amitecha, judge your... And you know what? Not, a, not only the judges who wear the robes are judges. We are all judges every moment of the day. We look at people, eh, I like, I don't like, this one, or this part I like, that part I don't like, this action I liked, I didn't like that they did that, I did like they did that. We're constantly judging. So how do you do that judgment? Betzedek. Betzedek. What is the betzedek? The, the scales of justice. What are the scales of justice? On the one hand, lo selech rachel ba'mecha. Do not use your words. Right to say anything negative about somebody else. On the other hand, lo recha, don't be silent when somebody is getting hurt. One second, how do I know whether it's on this side of the scale or on that side of the scale? It's impossible to know unless you open up Sefer Chavetz Chaim and he's going to tell you or the Torah itself, and many, and then Nach, and you'll say sometimes you have to speak up. Now the classic example of this uh, is given was the case of Bathsheba, the wife of Shlomo HaMelech. If you remember the Haftorah that speaks about uh, in the Navi that Adoniyahu, at the very end of David uh, 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 in David Zokin of Abiyomen, David is reaching his the end of his days. And it's a question of who's going to be the king afterwards. And all of a sudden, Adoniyahu starts calling in some of the big shots, you know, the, the, the Sar Tzava and the, the Anche Chayel, you know, some of them, and his brothers and so on. He's saying, I, he, he hired 50 PR guys. That's a lot. If you think about it, for a PR firm to have 50 people working on your case, that's a lot. That's probably cost a lot of money. He had 50 guys running in front of him. He said, I'm going to be king. I'm running for king. And that's it. I'm going to be king. So the Navi says to Basheva, you better go tell David Amelech right now what's going on. Why? He says so, because Adoniah is going to kill you. The minute he becomes king, he's going to eliminate his chief rival, which is everybody knows, Shlomo Amelech, who promised Basheva that this would be his king, the king. So says the Navi, go and tell him what's going on, because if you don't, it's Lo Sama Damri. Ay, Lashon Hara, Lashon Hara. Lashon Hara, fine. But on the other hand, lo sanad amriyecha. This scale is, it, it, you see how brilliant the Torah is to capture in a few words a massive, um, a, a, a core principle which applies in endless, infinity cases. Infinity cases. Do you speak up about a shidduch and say, I don't think that this is a good shidduch for you, right? When people call you for a reference, you have to make this judgment, right? 
If you're always going to say, great, 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 wonderful, and then they come back afterwards, you fooled me. You, you gave me a reference to a person or to a... And, and then I ended up in a, such a terrible problem. Lo samel dam recha, you allowed my blood to be spilled. No, but I just didn't, you know, I didn't want to get involved, you know. That's also not good. And on the other hand, if basically everything is fine and there's a small problem that's really rather insignificant, maybe the person's past, they did something wrong, or there was an incident, or in the family somebody did something wrong, whatever, and you say, well, do you know about this family, that blah, 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 and the shidduch is off? Wow, you just destroyed, you just destroyed someone's opportunity. So, this is the, I would call it the, the, the it's like the matrix of the entire Kedoshim, is this, is this Shivim. I'm going to use my words. How am I going to use my words? Either, if I open my mouth, I could do damage, so better be quiet. On the other hand, if I don't open my mouth, someone's going to suffer. And we have to speak up. We have to speak the truth. We have to have the courage to speak the truth. How do you know? You need somebody to tell you, lahavdil ben ha-tahor you got to open up the Chavetz Chaim and say, okay, in these circumstances, I'm allowed to hear Lush and her about this person because, because somebody's saying go into business with him and then I can lose my money. And, 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 you, and under the Tanaim that you have, like there's, seven, there's a seven-point checklist. Like, do you know it to be a fact? Did you hear it yourself? Was it hearsay? You know, was it verified? And even then, you accept it, but you don't really believe it. You, you know, because, yeah, yes, you have, you have, are you no gay at it's an incredibly difficult process to tease out. It's going through the branches and the leaves of the Eitz Hadas Tovera and knowing which is kosher, which is not. That is what halacha is. That's exactly what halacha is. So to that, to that extent, we could say that, um, that um, you know, it, it is on some hand, in some way, a dialectic because it's like, we, I'm weighing, I'm constantly weighing back and forth and back and forth to find the way through. The, so I, I, think that, I think that this speaks to the idea that Parshish Kedoshim is a deeper Aseris Adibros because we now have to take it to the next level that, okay, we're Jews and we're going to do the mitzvot, but are we achieving Kedusha? Are we, are we really on a, a holy level? Or are we Kaddish Yatz Mechab and Mutalach? You know, how are you eating? Is your eating holy eating? What does that mean? Making brachas properly. You're sitting down and you're benching afterwards. You're eating what's good for you and not what's horrible for you. You know? You know, are you gluten-free? And because you have, I don't know, celiac, but then you can eat crackers on, you know, and cake when you see it. You know, there's, you got to know, it's not the easiest thing. It's not the easiest thing to be the Kedusha, okay? And especially, I think Kedusha, in terms of Havdalah, means to know that we are an Am Kadosh, and that's what we're doing here in Eretz Yisrael, and we're very privileged to be in a land of Kedusha. So I had a friend uh, who was a rabbi, <laughs> he's a rabbi, well, pretty well-known rabbi. He spoke at the Siyum Hashas, he lives here though, that was just before made Aliyah about uh, six years ago. And he used to say to us when we were young Bachrim, coming from America, the Bachrim are running around, they're going out at night, they're hopping a pizza, they're running around, maybe they're talking to girls a little bit, whatever they're doing. He says, you're in the palter in Shalmelech. There are tvias on you. You are in the palace of the king. Watch out. You're not just here. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, we're in the palace. When you do something wrong in the palace, you know, there's the security guards there. They're going to they're gonna grab you. So when you do something out, you know, 15 miles away, you can make fun of the king. You can do whatever you want. No one's going to hop you. But we're here. So we have to be on our best behavior. Weren't there a bunny who wouldn't come here to sell because of that? That, is one of the, that was one of the tinnest, although people disagreed with that. But that was, the Balitosvos said, we're afraid to come, some of them, because they said, what about Chumas and Maestras? We're, we're going to mess up. Yeah, that same law. You know, we're going to be here. We can't even eat an apple without worrying about it. That a Kasmus could be Tevel. Holy cow, it's a terrible Avera. You know? That's only if you're a very nervous person. <laughs> you have to be medactic with mitzvos like to the hilt. Okay, there are people like that, for sure. They may say, I'm too holy to go to Eretz Yisrael. <laughs> too holy, right? Nope. 
And it's true to a certain extent because, uh, oh, this I'll say, many of the Gedolim, and this is what, um, I don't know if I mentioned the story to you about the Chavetz Chaim or Rechon of Asserman. No? So in this we'll wrap it up. Rebbe Chavetz Chaim said to Rechon of Asserman right before he passed away. He passed away in 1933. Hitler was already in power as chancellor or whatever. And Chavetz Chaim had Ruach HaKodesh. He said, there is no future to European Jews. We're all going to be destroyed. And he tells his primary student, Rebbe Chanan Wasserman, it's over. We're all going to be destroyed. There's no Yiddishkeit here left. There's no Yiddishkeit left in Europe. Europe was the whole Iker Yiddishkeit. So Rebbe Chanan Wasserman says, what is Rebbe? What's going to be? So what's, where's Yiddishkeit going to be? He goes, for Hartzion Yile Pleita, Hartzion Yile Pleita, Veheye Kadosh. Okay, so it means we're going to Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael is the new center of Torah. Now tell that to somebody in 1932. They'll tell you it was Mir, it was Brisk, it was, it was you know, Warsaw, it was Krakow, it was Budapest, it was anywhere but Eretz Yisrael under the British mandate with uh, a lot of very ultra-secular young people running the show. So he looked at the Chavetz Chaim and said, how are you... How could you say that? Look at the state affairs in Eretz Yisrael. How could that be the place where, it's gonna, where Hashem wants us to be? And, and Chavetz Chaim pointed out, he says, Veheye Kadosh. I didn't say that it's Kadosh now. I said that it will be Kadosh. It's a process. And, and it's going to take time. And it's going to take effort. And it's going to take people who are willing to seek Kadosh and, and, and infuse Kadosh into Eretz Yisrael. But it will happen. And not to worry. And that was the Chavetz Chaim's message, which is really remarkable. And I'll add you a story. I still allowed for, I'm allowed two minutes. Did you say the first time? You know, have a heart see on Yila Plata. Bracha. And we're okay, now. So uh, my daughter, among a lot of people here in the community, knew this boy that was killed in an accident. Mm-hmm. There were some neighbors. They lived he lived on Lachish, I believe. All right, Shama Zavon Leah. So uh, she was a little broken up about it. Can you imagine, you know, a friend, a peer, you know, someone, at least she, she knew the family, something along those lines. And they paid shiva calls here, and people who went to the shiva calls said that it was very, very, very hard, gut-wrenching, you know. And then she went on Yom Zikaron with friends to Har Herzl, because that's like what kids do. They go and they listen to the stories of the fallen soul to give them kavod, to say that you are Kedoshim, because they fell al Kiddush Hashem. And she was very, like, can you imagine coming from one to the other? And my daughter is a very organized girl, if you know my Aliyama. She's a very special girl. And she's very together. And, and you know, she doesn't miss appointments, she doesn't forget names, and she doesn't do anything. She's, she's the opposite of a space cadet, you know, just the exact opposite. She got on the wrong bus home. She got on a bus. She didn't read the numbers properly. She thought she was on a bus to Beit Shemesh. Ends up she's on a bus to Netanya. And she's in a state, you know, where she's just cried out. And, and she's a little confused. What do I do? Where do you get off? You get off in the middle of the wilderness somewhere. How do you get back? And, and who befriended her? A Haredi family. Saw so she was upset. And they, they said, can we help you? And can we make phone calls for you to find out? And, they, and they, they made like 10 phone calls for her, and they showed her, you know, what to do. And then they asked her, why were you there? And she just started, she just broke out in tears and said, because she knew this boy, and they were very empathetic to her. And she wrote about it. She wrote a little note to our family, like in our inner family uh, chat, saying that it was so good for her to see that Dafka, someone from the Haredi world, was so empathetic and caring and identified with the fact that this too was a Kadosh. And that I think for her it was a little bit of a healing moment. As if she, didn't get off the, she didn't get on the wrong bus, she got on the right bus. And uh, because for one camp to look at the other camp and say, well, you don't care, you're apathetic, you're just living your own life, you don't identify with our struggle here, what the Hayei Kadosh process, 
with all of its inherent pitfalls, with all of its dangers, with all of its victims along the way. Yeah. Still, Chavot Chaim said it's going to work out. And that will require Adas Yisrael. Because ultimately, Parsh Kedoshim is only said where? Adas Yisrael. With the collective, like Harsinai, with the Aserah Sadibros. Maybe that's the point of saying Kedoshim requires Aserah Sadibros, meaning you cannot achieve Kedusha in a vacuum. You have to achieve it as part of a larger community. Like you receive the Torah, so too you have to build Kedusha. And therefore, we'll say Neshama Shalev and Aliyah. And we should see Simchas and continued Hayek Kadosh, uh, here especially in Eretz Yisrael and all of our lives. Amen.